My first experience with Batman uh, was probably the Keaton films in 1989. I was born in 85, and like a lot of people my age, that was our first major exposure to the Cape Crusader, assuming you didn't have you know, outside influence offering you Batman comics or anything like that at the time. I had missed the 1970s uh, Super Friends cartoons and all of the spinoffs and everything going on with that, so I didn't really get introduced to Batman until uh, 1989 with the Batman film, and that movie took the world, or the US anyway, by storm. T-shirts, cereals, it was all over my preschool. Uh, and that's what introduced me to the Cape Crusader. It was a great way to break into things. And along with that movie eventually came Bruce Timm's uh, Batman the Animated Series, which aired on Fox for several years before it moved over to WB and then finally becoming part of the Justice League on Cartoon Network. So I was familiar with Batman uh, before discovering Adam West in the role. And he was a character I definitely had a fondness for. And a superhero character I was introduced to even before the X-Men, which really got me reading comics. But it was... Adam West as Batman that I think really made me fall in love with the character. Uh, when I was first introduced to the 1960s Batman TV series, it actually aired on FX. At that point in my life, I actually had cable, and FX was a brand new channel, nothing like it is today. Uh, they used to have hosts in between each TV show that would be sitting in a fake apartment room, and they would kind of lead in an or outro of each program, letting you know what was about to come up, their own memories of the shows that were about to air if they were old enough, like they were in Batman's case. And it was just a, uh, a really fun way, I think, to get introduced to Batman through this brand new channel. There were other shows on FX, like Super Collectors, that I was really into, but Batman was the one that I always wanted to tune into. And a special thing about Batman was that it was probably the one show of everything I was watching, and we're going to say this was probably 1992 era. Uh, it was the one show that I could always guarantee that my father would want to sit down and watch with me. Uh, we called it Blue Batman because the Keaton Batman had already existed. Uh, but Blue Batman was fun. Um, you know, I didn't get any of the uh, irreverent humor now that I see as an adult that is really entertaining about the show. I just loved seeing the Cape Crusader uh, knocking people out on the screen, getting the, the bow, the biff, the bam, all those things popping up, uh, the onomatopoeia is popping up on screen. So uh, it was really exciting for me as a kid. I instantly gravitated towards Robin being the younger member of the team, and it was just a really fun series. And the way that FX used to run them is that you would get an episode of Batman and then immediately another episode of Batman. And then I think they even ran it back to back with uh, Green Hornet at one point. So when that crossover happened with Green Hornet, that was really cool to see between the two shows. But that was what became my Batman. It was fun. I could relate to him. It was very colorful. The music was great. You know, it opened with a cartoon, which again, as a kid, in 92, I was, you know, six, seven years old. And uh, it was just something that I thought was really cool. And then when Batgirl showed up in season three, you know, it was like, wow, the team's getting bigger. So, and I had no concept at the time that this show wasn't going to be having new episodes. Everything was a new episode to me. So um, it was my favorite Batman series to this day. Um, I really just have a great fondness for it. And it's one of the few things. Um, I had a tumultuous relationship with my father uh, growing up, but I could always count on baseball and Batman to bring us together. So I've got that that special feeling, I guess, whenever uh, Batman comes on on TV. And he just, Adam West was, he was heroic on the show. I mean, again, he was very cheesy if you're watching as an adult, but he always had the answers if you're a kid. And he always knew different forms, he knew science, he knew different forms of martial arts. He was a really interesting character to look up to and a really special character and one that I'm glad we've been able to put on TV and that has survived in reruns and rebroadcast and even recently finally come out on DVD. I mean, that was a great moment for me when I could finally buy the show that I had such fond memories of watching uh, when I was younger. So um, I heard the news today that Adam West had passed away and uh, it was really quite sad because what he brought to my life was so special and I think what he brought to everybody else's life was so special. So, um, you know, he lived to tell 88 years old, very long life. He got, I'm sure everybody says he, how nice he was, but he got to live a long life. He didn't have his life necessarily robbed away from him, which is great for somebody who has such a positive impact on so many people. So I wanted to take a moment to acknowledge um, basically the joy that Adam West brought my life. Um, I remember him on Batman. I remember him as the principal on Pete and Pete, as um, the Batman knockoff character on Fairly Odd Parents. I'm forgetting the name. So I've seen him over the years. It's always fun to see him show up in new projects. Um, as recently as even the Return of the Cape Crusader movie that's uh, over here on the shelf. So um, I guess I just wanted to say thank you to Adam West for everything you've given us. And um, you're a part of television history. You will never be forgotten. And thanks for bringing everybody joy.